Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Route to Survival video and in this video we're going to be taking a first look at Mythic Connor who is going to be the next promo character coming to RTS. He's going to be going in the wheel on Thursday night and visually well he is pretty manic. He is pretty manic. It's like Rockstar Connor right here. On the right hand side we can see he's got that, that mohawk, the pink mohawk. And he's got this massive, massive axe. It is pretty brutal, I'm going to be honest. The leather jacket, I'm not really sure what he's got on his back. He's got another Molotov. It's another character with a Molotov in the pocket. With no fire probably damage on any of his kit. Just like we had with uh, with uh, Garrett, unfortunately. I'm not sure what that is in the back of his actual backpack. It, it, on the left-hand side, we can see this big flag on his back. So it could potentially be a flag there. Um, but yeah, Connor looking pretty mental as we see him. He is a, like a British character in the game, so representing, uh, apparently. Oh my god. Oh, let me check out his stats. Tier 5, Gold Mythic, level 600. He has got 15,090 attack, 12,235 defense, and 13,458 HP. He is a strong character, damage dealer, and he is considered a mythic character, of course. And he is going to be part of the Saviors. So this is another character going into the Savior Allegiance group. Now I'll go across to check out his rush. And it is called Punk Rock. 66 AP cost rush. So reasonably fast. Deal 450% damage to a line of enemies. This character gets 25% bonus HP. So... You know, for an attack team character, he's going to get his rush off, generally speaking, turn 3. As long as his his signature move is second turn and you get a little bit of AP from somewhere else. 65 AP is the easy AP to get on an attack team. On a defense team, he'd get there without a doubt. But he does seem to be a bit more offensive when it comes to his stats. When it comes to his, obviously, his role as a damage dealer. And when it comes to his adrenaline rush... It is just very offensive, but there may be other parts of the kit that makes him actually pretty good on defense. So we'll check out the rest in a second. But first off, the rush. It does a lot of damage. 450% to a line is very nice. It is doing strong damage as well, and we have seen a couple of fast characters come out already. So the potential of taking down those characters is going to be much higher because of trait damage. Him getting bonus per HP is nice. It's just going to give him a little barrier. A lot of defense teams do have quite heavy hitting characters on them right now. And that means that the 25% bonus HP will obviously be very useful. But in the future, it will just basically stop him being hard focused. Or if he does get hard focused, it will just give him that little barrier like I said before. Okay, so we have got the rush on Connor. And you can see on the top line, there is a fast character. The other character is not fast. So there's going to be trait damage to one, not tra trait damage to the other. You can affect this with attack versus mods to do more damage, obviously. But we're going to do a lot more damage to Zeke. We have got minus 15% attack because of that Zeke passive. But we should be able to do a reasonable amount of damage anyway. Rush is going to come in. And you can see it's a very hefty hit to a line of enemies. The bonus HP came back to me as well. And you can see 4,206 bonus HP. Because of the base HP being, what, 13,458. So it's just going to be that, like, like I said, a little bit of a shield... So that if Connor eventually starts getting focused because they have got a couple of alert characters on their team, he's going to withstand that damage a little bit better. Now on an attack team, this rush is obviously absolutely fine. You can 100% control where this is rush is going. It's a controlled rush. There is no random element to it. You, it's a line of damage. But potentially, you may have to attack a line where there's only one character alive or the central character so then it would turn into a single hit rush it isn't going to be as powerful in that situation but it will still hit pretty hard if we look at the skill upgrade you can see once he gets to tier 2 it gets a 50% bonus and once he gets to tier 4 it gets another 50% bonus so it originally starts out at 350% it does mean you do not have to get him to tier 5 to be able to get the rush to be maxed out this is good news for attack team, you know, on attack teams, but he will obviously have reduced stats. And if you know the difference between a tier 4 and a tier 5 gold mythic, it is quite a big difference in terms of damage output. Now, if this guy was usable on a defense team, that rush would obviously just be completely random. He could do it to a line of characters, that's actually two people, or he could do it to that central character, like I said before. It really depends on who the AI is focusing 
on this team that I'm using quite a lot in these videos right now, they seem to really love Alice as the leader. So if he did rush, he could effectively just use it against one character. And that is, of course, the big downside there. Now we'll go across and check out the signature move, and it is called Git Lost. It has got that initial cooldown of turn two, which was required. Cooldown of three turns, number of uses unlimited. Deal 250% damage to a line of enemies. Those enemies get taunt for two turns. Now, he is a damage dealer, but now he has some control on his kit. Effectively, in terms of damage, it's just a reduced version of his rush. 250% to a line of enemies is actually quite powerful. You don't see too many heavy hitting rushes like this. Normally, it's like 100 to 150% to a single target. Now, it's 250% to a line. The only downside of this versus those other one signature moves that I was talking about is this cannot crit. This is always going to be like a just a heavy hit to a line of enemies whereas those other ones can crit and then you can have obviously bonuses coming because the crit crit multiplier depending on you know how you build that character that's not going to be needed on connor here so based off of his rush and signature move so far he has 100 attack set on attack teams no crit multiplier is required the enemies getting taunted though might offset the ap gain required because every time you get attacked by a character that is taunted it is a guaranteed 5 ap so you could potentially be able to sacrifice ap on attack on a defense team and also not need any ap gain boost on a, an attack team to get the rush naturally so that is actually going to be quite useful especially on the defense team just because his defensive stats are really low he's definitely going to have to double stack those defensive stats if you do want to use him there and with a potential two turn taunt to two characters on a defense team on turn two is actually really powerful turn two 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 yeah Okay, so I'll test this out for him on a defense team. I, I think most of you will know, understand how it would work on an attack team from this as well. But on a defense team, I've put him with just a stat weapon. He hasn't got any AP on attack. And I'll just hit defend on everybody. You'll see him gain AP. And you'll see he does have nowhere near half AP. Okay, we'll defend on four characters. And then I'll explain what's going to happen next. He'll do his signature move. And you'll see the AP bar go quite high, but not be maxed out. You'll see the bar not flash just momentarily. But whoever he does taunt will then automatically attack him at the beginning of, next turn, of my turn instantly. So there'll be like a moment where it isn't full and then, and then it should be full. Now he, he might only attack an individual character. He did seem to go for Maggie on that first basic attack. So he might use his signature move against Maggie. And this could actually be a good test to see if would he get enough AP in that situation from that taunted attack to still get his rush naturally turn three with a stat weapon. We can have a look. He is actually going to go for Maggie. He's sees not max rush, but he is going to be max rush after that taunted attack. Because taunted attacks give a guarantee of 5 AP plus any AP based on the actual health that they take off of the enemy. So that's actually really useful for Connor if you did want to use him on a defense team. On an attack team, you'll be absolutely fine because you only need 1 AP at that point. You have 30 from your huge AP on attack basic attack. You'd have 35 from the signature move. And you only need one more, which would happen from one of the two, you know, taunted attacks that you got to get that 66 AP rush for turn three. Now, when we look at the upgrades for his signature move, it has got an initial cooldown of two, cooldown of three. You have to get him to tier three to get that cooldown to be three. Otherwise, it's going to be five. I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue. Most people would probably get him to tier four before really using him, at least heavily. He does, however, require to be tier five to get that 50% bonus on the on the signature move damage. But even if you don't get him at tier 5, 200% is still good. But you are obviously going to lose out on two forms of damage. The tier 5 here, and also his stats will be lower. It is also worth noting that neither his rush nor his signature move require any upgrades from what I've seen. So you are going to have him at fully maxed out rush and fully maxed out signature move from the get-go regardless of what tier you get him to anything that's usable on his rush will be completely maxed out now of course connor has those mythic abilities the passive skills his first one is agility because he is a damage dealer this will increase 
his basic attack damage, and that's it. It will literally be his first basic attack. His signature move, it will not change. His rush, it will not change. So out of all of the damage dealers, a lot of them are being multi-hit, a lot of them doing single target attacks with their signature moves, his agility boost is going to get the least power increase, but it will still you know, boost his basic attack damage, so you can still see it as worth it. His second passive is called Broken Blade. When attacked, the attacker gets minus 20% attack for two turns this is actually not too bad again it kind of feeds into him being on a defense team in this situation where it's actually not beneficial to attack this guy and seeing as if he was on a defense team he'd have lower stats it's actually kind of interesting this uh this passive here the third passive is called battle rush when attacked, this character gets 20% bonus HP. Again, like there's, it's a, these are guarantees as well. It isn't like better chance. If you attack this guy, like let's say with a Sandy, you're going to do a lot of damage, but Sandy's going to get minus 20% attack and this guy is going to get plus 20 percent bonus hp so yeah i kind of like that again for a defense team surprisingly enough i think for an attack team he's obviously going to be great if you have if he does get focused by the defense team he's just going to mount up that bonus hp and it will be of each individual attack as well so like the first attack will come in the bonus hp will come in the second attack will hit the bonus hp rather than his base hp and then he's going to just be shielded for the rest of the time if he gets hard focused so it's actually pretty good for attack and defense and then he has one last passive which is called enraged when attack 40 percent chance the attacker gets taunt for two turns and again this one this one looks like a defense team passive to me if you had all of these on a defense team that is actually kind of nuts but don't forget he has a turn two signature move that taunts characters for two turns he'll have a 40 percent chance to make that again last for two turns and then the next turn 40 percent chance again to last two turns this guy could literally have an entire team taunted and then constantly being retaunted every time they attack him now there are characters out there that do deal with this already for instance negan has focus on his leader skill but that's only for the first two turns that's only for the first two turns after that Connor's going to be a big issue for any team, pretty much, unless you've got taunt resist. And I know a lot of people are running stun resist at the moment because it's just like stun weapons, pretty much. But it does seem maybe taunt is going to have a little comeback. A little comeback. So I think the best way to show you how this works is pretty much going to be on the defense team against a five man squad. I do a basic attack. He's guaranteed to get 20% bonus HP instantly. My character guaranteed to get minus 20% attack and I had a 40% chance to get taunted. It happened. The next character, same situation. He is going to get, she is also going to get taunted. Now I have got an elusive weapon on this character as well, which is actually going to be really, really nice combo. 20% bonus HP again. Now she did hit into that bonus HP, so his bonus HP has been reduced. But again, another attack comes in, taunted as well. Another attack comes in, taunted as well, four taunts. Can we get the five taunts? We did. And now, now it's just going to just do it by itself. Everyone's going to attack him. He's going to have full bonus HP. He is completely tanked out. Oh, actually, we did. We had one character. Oh, it's because he attacked Maggie. And Maggie does have a passive where she can cleanse a character. Oh, so Doc Stevens kind of got away with it, but he's got to attack again. And he didn't get taunted this time. But he's going to come in with the big attack on the bottom line. And that's just with, that's with a defensive weapon. That's with a defensive weapon right there. But look at his stats right now. This is him unmodded as well. So don't forget, you can get that HP up to like 25k. And that'll be him at like 50k HP. Yeah, this guy is going to be a monster on defense teams. I think we desperately need hill reduction in some, some form on an attack team right now. Because obviously, hit fast healing weapons, this guy's bonus HP. Man, that taunt passive is just nasty. It is actually kind of nasty. And especially if you had the right weapon in his hands. I had the carry Ann sword in his hands just to give him the double stats. But the bonus of that is obviously he can get elusive and they're not even gaining AP when they're doing those taunt attacks. So, um, yeah, pretty, pretty nasty indeed. If we check out the upgrades of the skills, Broken Blade is from Tier 1, Agility Tier 2, Battle Rush is Tier 3. The first half of Enraged is at Tier 4, where you get 20% chance the attacker gets taunt for two turns. And if you get that second gold mythic, you can get Enraged 
two, which adds another 20% chance the attacker gets torn for two turns. I would say, even if you don't get him at tier five, that's great. A one in five chance that you're going to taunt a character for two turns when he's basic attack. But that that tier five double stacking that that taunt when basic attack is actually going to be really crazy i don't know if this guy is actually built for defense teams but i'm just seeing him as being this really nutty defense team character right now that honestly i don't really want to deal with just straight up do not want to deal with i'm just kind of happy that i've got sandy who's pretty much going to be the only person who's going to be able to take this guy out on my roster right now um i maybe he was built for an attack team and maybe some people some of you are looking at like this guy and saying hey this is going to be sick for an attack team but for me, this is going to be absolutely nasty for a defense team. Now, he has got one more thing on his kit, which obviously plays into how things work. You've seen this throughout the video. You probably saw it proccing some of the in some of the clips. He has got Berserker. Whenever this character takes damage, they gain 20% attack until the end of their next turn. In addition to any existing attack increases, including prior activations of this skill. This happens when he gets taunted attacked. He's going to guarantee two potential taunts on turn two to boost that rush for turn three so he'll have a 40 percent attack bonus at that point if you did focus him early on by accident you know and got taunted or there's other situations that popped up like for instance he gets that signature move off taunts a couple of characters and then the, the actual passive starts procking on the taunt and then he gets this the signature move off again and he's getting multiple of characters attacking him that's when obviously it can mount up to be a big attack boost and that's why he won't potentially need any attack boost on a defense team he can get it all from berserker and absolutely be fine okay so we'll just show you the berserker buffs because they are not a straight additive it doesn't go 20 40 60 you'll see that it goes a little bit different than that he'll get a 20 percent off the first attack the second attack it will go up to 44 percent and this is because it's 20 percent plus 20 percent plus 20 percent of 20 percent you know 20 percent of 20 percent is four so it's going to be 20 24 and then we'll get the same situation here. It won't go up to 60. It goes up to 72.8. It won't go up to 80. It'll go up to 107. And then it will eventually go up to 150. And this is why he was doing so much damage before on his um, on his rush. When he did his rush before. We have got a couple of tornado attacks coming in. We'll get it up again. It'll be 150%. He's going to get that rush off. And this is where the huge amounts of damage is going to obviously come out. Now, the characters I'm using on this attack team are a defense team actual proper offensive characters are not going to be able to withstand that sort of massive rush whereas obviously you know zeke and and the characters that he's attacking right now have got defensive stats so they're going to have more chance to survive it so obviously berserker's nice and it will work particularly nice with connor's kit right now everything is you know pretty well rounded on connor's kit in terms of working together, I like that the passive is being utilized by the rest of his kit. It is a much nicer character in general when it is designed this way. In terms of, you know, you, you're getting a character that makes sense. And this character makes sense. He is extremely powerful, but he does definitely make sense. Now, Connor does have that attached weapon. It is Connor's violent, gore-covered iron pickaxe. It has a 25% attack base, a medium bonus to AP when attacking, and in that third slot, when attacking, a better chance to cause a minus 40% defense for three turns to the enemy. Now, it is a five-star weapon here. I had to upgrade it to five-star to put a weapon in his hands for the testing. This weapon, obviously, we, we've seen this before. It's, it's more of a visual thing. The we base weapon isn't that great, but since I've been thinking about the kind of kit that you could make on this character in terms of how you build him out with the weapon, you don't actually need to have a third slot on this character that would be making him windowless. His passive already does that for you already. So you could have stun on attack on that third slot and he'd still be a non-window because if you attack him, you've got a chance to be taunted, you're going to be attacked down and you're going to give him bonus HP. Like there's already really big negatives in his passives to attacking this guy. Or you could go with something that actually makes it so that he does better damage or gives himself a buff you know there could be a particular weapon that comes out in the future where that third slot is really nice the power of this guy's kit it probably is a good idea to make him a specific weapon so that is mythic connor and he is pretty legit i believe he's the first promo strong character 
someone's probably going to be able to remember all the promo characters. There haven't been too many so far, like five. But I think he's the first promo strong character. He is a damage dealer, and I did kind of think that the damage dealers within strong were kind of underwhelming from the mythic tokens in terms of just like actual pure damage dealers. They're more like support damage, like Negan and Wayland. Dexter was pretty much it, and... I think he has potential against certain teams, but this guy is obviously nuts. I, I still see this guy as more of a defense team character than an attack team character, but you can tell me what you think about Connor as a character. Do you think he's a defense team character or an attack team character? If you had him on your roster, where would you think he would be best utilized? You can obviously utilize him on both, but where do you think he'd be the most useful? Do leave your thoughts down below in the comments, guys, but that is going to be the end of my video. If you did enjoy it or find it informative, please hit that like button button it massively helps a youtube channel and if you aren't already please hit subscribe you'll be notified when i release my videos and my live streams go live but that is the end of this one guys i want to thank you very much for tuning in and as always keep on surviving guys keep on surviving